Now before I tell you about uh, what exactly is bronchopulmonary segment, let's briefly look at the bronchial tree. The bronchial tree which you can see here and in higher magnification you can see here also, this is responsible for aeration of lungs. So here in this picture we can see this is right lung, this is left lung, this is the trachea which is going to bring air and trachea can be seen here dividing into two bronchi. These are known as right and left principal bronchi or right and left primary bronchi. Each primary bronchi can be seen here is dividing into smaller and smaller bronchi and then into the bronchioles which will lead to the alveoli where the exchange of gases is going to take place. So let us see in the higher magnification the bronchial tree. So we will look at the bronchial tree of the left lung. So here we can see this is the trachea and it is bifurcating here into right primary or principal bronchus and this is left primary or principal bronchus. In case of left lung, we have only two lobes, right? So we will have only two lobar or secondary bronchi. So secondary bronchus is also known as lobar bronchus. So this is first secondary bronchus and for the upper lobe and this will be the next secondary bronchus for the lower lobe of the left lung. Now each of these secondary bronchus this is further going to subdivide into tertiary or segmental bronchi. So here also we can see number of segmental bronchi. Here also we can see at least three of them and then what happens this tertiary or segmental bronchus that is going to further subdivide into the smaller bronchi but we don't name them. And then a time comes then when we start calling these subdivisions as bronchioles. So when do you call them bronchioles? You can see here these light blue colored structure. These are the cartilage rings and the cartilage plates. Now in case of bronchioles, there won't be any cartilages in their wall. That won't be there. Now this bronchiole also, they also further subdivide. So we name them some of them. One is terminal bronchiole and another is respiratory bronchiole right so respiratory bronchioles they will have some alveolar sacs in uh, along them so the exchange of gases does take place there that's why the name is respiratory bronchiole and finally we reach here the alveolar sacs and the each alveolar sac you can see has got number of alveoli where exactly the gaseous exchange takes place so this is the bronchial tree now let us look at the bronchopulmonary segment so how do we define a bronchopulmonary segment? In simple language, bronchopulmonary segment is a wedge-shaped or pyramidal-shaped area of lung which is aerated by tertiary or segmental bronchus and its further subdivisions. So which you can appreciate here in this diagram, we can see this is the tertiary, one of the tertiary or the segmental bronchus here and its further subdivisions into smaller bronchi, then into bronchioles. Finally, we have alveolar sacs and alveoli. So this whole area, we have just shown one. There will be number of branching here, number of bronchi uh, bronchioles and alveoli will be there. All these, they will constitute one bronchopulmonary segment. Now further we can add some more terms right. So that is it is also structurally and functionally independent respiratory unit right. So it is not it does not depend on the adjacent parts of the lung for its blood supply right or for its aeration. So it acts structurally as and functionally independent respiratory unit. Now let us complete the definition. So bronchopulmonary segment is a wedge shaped or pyramidal shaped structurally and functionally independent respiratory unit of lung which is aerated by tertiary or segmental bronchus. Now let us see how many bronchopulmonary segments are present in each lung. So each lung has got 10 bronchopulmonary segments. Let let us now look at the nomenclature of bronchopulmonary segments. First, we will see in right lung and then in the left lung. In this diagram, we can see this is the anterolateral surface of the right lung. This is the posterior medial surface of the right lung. Here is the hilum of the right lung. 
In this diagram, we can see the bronchial tree with the trachea, primary bronchus, the secondary uh, bronchi and the segmental bronchi. In case of right lung, we have three lobes, right? So first look at how many uh, bronchopulmonary segments are present in each lobe. Total, we already know that we have 10 bronchopulmonary segments in each lung, right? So here we can see three lobes. This will be the superior or the upper lobe. Here also you can see this is the superior or the upper lobe. You can see here the dark black lines demarcating the lobes. So this is the oblique fissure. We can see here this is the oblique fissure and this is the transverse fissure. Here also we can see this is the oblique fissure and this is the transverse fissure. So this is upper or superior lobe. This is middle lobe, right? And this one is the lower or inferior lobe. On this surface also, this is superior or upper lobe, middle lobe and inferior or lower lobe. First, let us look at how many number of bronchopulmonary segments are present in each lobe. Total, we already know now, there are 10 bronchopulmonary segments. Let us see in superior lobe, how many bronchopulmonary segments are there? There are three, right? Here you can see, these are the segmental bronchi. You can see one, two and three. Three are present. Now let us name them. The first one which is near the apex of the lung and that's why this is known as the apical bronchopulmonary segment. Second one you can see here this is the interior border of the lung. Here also you can see that. So second is the anterior bronchopulmonary segment and number three is the posterior bronchopulmonary segment. So the superior or upper lobe has got three bronchopulmonary segments and they are apical, anterior and posterior. Let us look at the middle lobe now. Middle lobe, how many bronchopulmonary segments are present? Two are present. So that's what you can see here, four and five number. And how are they named? The fourth one, which you can see is more present on the medial surface also. This is the medial bronchopulmonary segment and five fifth is the lateral one. So we have only two bronchopulmonary segments and they are named as medial and lateral bronchopulmonary segment. Let us see in the inferior or lower lobe, how many bronchopulmonary segments are there? Five are there because five are already covered. So how do we name them? Here also you can see these five, one, six to 10. Okay, so let us name them now here. The first one that is number six, which is towards the upper end of the lower lobe and there also it forms like an apex right so either you call it apical or to differentiate it from the apical of the superior lobe some people also name it as superior bronchopulmonary segment so you can name the sixth one as superior or apical bronchopulmonary segment of lower lobe then we have four which are reaching the base of the lung so we will call them as basal segments, right? So according to their position, we will give them name. Here you can see the seventh one, which is present on the medial aspect. So that is known as medial basal. Then the eighth one is here. You can see this is lateral basal. The ninth is more anteriorly placed. So this is anterior basal. And tenth, which is along the posterior aspect, that is known as posterior basal. So we have four basals, medial basal, lateral basal, anterior basal, and posterior basal, right? Let us now see in the left lung. So here again, we can see in the left lung, this will be the anterolateral surface. This is the posterior medial surface. Here we have the hilum and here we have the bronchial tree with the segmental bronchus. Again, how many bronchopulmonary segments here? 10 in total. But in case of left lung, we have only two lobes. So here we can see this dark black line separating the two lobes, which represents the oblique fissure. Here also we can see this is the oblique fissure. So this will be the upper or the superior lobe in this aspect, medial, posterior medial aspect also you can see this is the superior or the upper lobe and this is the inferior or the lower lobe. This is the inferior or the lower lobe. So let us see how many bronchopulmonary segments are present in the superior lobe. We have five. So in case of left lung, the upper or the superior lobe as well as the lower or the inferior lobe each will have five bronchopulmonary segments. So that's what you can see here one to five right the segmental bronchi can be seen let us name them here also again if you look at the apex near the apex you will name it apical the one which is present in along the anterior border you will name it 
anterior and more posteriorly placed one this is known as posterior so this is similar to the bronchopulmonary segments present in the upper lobe or superior lobe of the right lung now we have two more here these are known as lingular superior lingular and the inferior lingular why we call them as lingular because we can see here along the anterior border at the lower end towards the base we have a tongue like extension of the lung right which is just below this indentation along the anterior border of the left lung which is known as cardiac notch so just below that we have a projection of the lung which looks like a tongue so that's why the name is lingula so this part is known as lingula so that's why the name of these bronchopulmonary segments is superior lingular and inferior lingular let us look at the bronchopulmonary segments in the inferior lobe or the lower lobe they are exactly same as in case of right lung so they will be you can see here the number 6 right the superior most so you call it superior or you call it apical of the lower lobe and then we have four basal medial basal then we have anterior basal lateral basal and posterior basal so these are the 10 bronchopulmonary segments present in the left lung let us now discuss the characteristic features of bronchopulmonary segment in this diagram we can see a part of the lung with two bronchopulmonary segments these are two adjacent bronchopulmonary segments now what do we see here these bronchopulmonary segments they are separated from each other by the presence of this connective tissue septa which you can see here the connective tissue septa that is surrounding the bronchopulmonary segment right and then what do we see inside this we can see that in the center we have this tertiary bronchus or the segmental bronchus which is further subdividing into smaller bronchi bronchioles alveolar sac and further in the alveoli we see two blood vessels one which we is in blue in color this is the segmental branch of pulmonary artery why we have colored it blue because it carries deoxygenated blood there is another uh, artery which is accompanying the bronchus and this is the bronchial artery because this carries oxygenated blood it will supply the bronchial tree which is present within the bronchopulmonary segment so this is the bronchial artery these three structures they are present right in the center of the bronchopulmonary segment and then further subdivide right which will reach the periphery of the bronchopulmonary segment we see something else here we see another kind of blood vessel which is present or located in the connective tissue septa and this is red in color what is this this is a tributary of pulmonary vein right they will join together to form the pulmonary veins and why they are red in color because they carry oxygenated blood now let us see one by one the characteristic features of the bronchopulmonary segment first is that each bronchopulmonary segment is pyramidal in shape which can be appreciated here and it has an apex and a base the apex is always directed towards the hilum and base is directed towards the surface of the lung or towards the periphery of the lung the second characteristic feature is that each segment is separated from the adjacent segment by the presence of connective tissue septa they are clinically important so i'll tell you little later that then we have as i told you earlier that the segmental or tertiary bronchus along with bronchial vessels and a branch of pulmonary artery they are positioned in the center of the bronchopulmonary segment then fourth is the tributaries of the pulmonary vein they are intersegmental they run in the connective tissue separ uh, septa separating the bronchopulmonary segments now their clinical relevance is that these intersegmental veins they act as guide for surgeons for separating the segments during surgical resection one particular bronchopulmonary segment can be removed or resected now without affecting the adjacent bronchopulmonary segments or adjacent part of the lung when this knowledge was not there that time the lobectomy had to be done the whole lobe of the lung was removed 
if they found any kind of disease process in that part of the lung now if you know that the disease process is limited to one bronchopulmonary segment only that particular segment can be resected or removed and which structure acts as, acts as a guide for surgeon for delimiting the bronchopulmonary segment these are the intersegmental veins these are tributaries of pulmonary veins the last is that this is the smallest part of the lung that can be removed as i said earlier without affecting the adjacent regions of the lung so these are the characteristic features of bronchopulmonary segment let us now look at the clinical anatomy the relevant clinical anatomy associated with the bronchopulmonary segment as said repeatedly earlier the connective tissue septa between the adjacent bronchopulmonary segments they act as natural barrier and they will prevent spread of infection between the segments right so if only one segment is involved in a particular kind of uh, infection it will not spread to the adjacent bronchopulmonary segment because of the presence of the connective tissue septa however the carcinoma and tuberculosis they break through the barrier for them the barrier is not sufficient enough right so if there is carcinoma in one bronchopulmonary segment it can spread to the adjacent bronchopulmonary segments and similarly the tuberculosis also can spread from one bronchopulmonary segment to the adjacent bronchopulmonary segments next the knowledge of bronchopulmonary segment how does it help a clinician right so first is that it helps a clinician while performing bronchoscopy if you are aware about the nomenclature of the bronchopulmonary segments it becomes easier for you to see exactly which a uh, segmental bronchus or which part of the lung or the bronchopulmonary segment is affected in a disease that can be done second is it also helps in correct interpretation of the bronchogram so if there is an any disease process in any bronchopulmonary segment if you know the nomenclature if you have the idea you will know that this part or this bronchopulmonary segment is affected by the disease so it helps in correct interpretation of the bronchogram then it also helps in understanding that abscess formation is more common in some segments there are some bronchopulmonary segments where the abscess formation is more common right and which are these these are the posterior segment of the upper lobe and the apical segment or the superior segment of the lower lobe now why is it so because they are most dependent they are in most dependent position in supine position and especially if the patient most of the time is lying supine right so the secretions which are there in in the bronchial tree they may not get removed easily which will remain there in the segmental bronchi in the bronchopulmonary segments and can lead to formation of the abscess so which are those two segments where you commonly found the abscess formation posterior segment of upper lobe and apical or superior segment of lower lobe then the natural drainage from the infected segment can be right done by adopting different postures right so if you are aware that this particular bronchopulmonary segment the abscess is there or the pus formation is there now you have to drain it right so you can put the patient in such a condition right in such a posture that drainage the gravity helps in the drainage right so for example the drainage of superior segment of upper lobe or apical segment of upper lobe the patient should be asked to lie prone this is the condition right with head uh, turned towards the towards one side this is in case of the posterior segments in case of posterior segments the lower part of the body has to be raised right so the gravity helps in draining it and the patient has to be in prone position whereas for anterior segments which are rarely involved right of the lower lobe then what has to be done the legs have to be raised and the person should be in the you can see here in the supine position right so this is how uh, if you know have the knowledge of the bronchopulmonary segments their location then by giving the right posture or telling the patient to lie in a right posture one can help in natural drainage of the infected segment